Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always, told out of voice of radio. So today, we need to take a little bit of a look at Dragon Ball. Yeah, that's right. We are continuing our complete history of the Pokemon trading card game. And we're having to take a little bit of a detour here to talk about a mini set. Now, nowadays, as I recall this in 2021, these mini sets, when I say mini set, I mean fewer cards, own booster packs, own products. You can't buy a booster box. You have to buy products with the boosters in. These are not that uncommon. We can get like one a year. Back then, however was not the case this was back when these mini sets were largely unheard of and that makes it very weird indeed now there were only actually 21 cards in the set so it's going to be a quicker history video than usual but it is one that we need to have a little bit of a chat about now it was released in japan on the 27th of january 2012 we would have to wait until october the 5th 2012 in order to actually get it now that's a long wait nine months between sets is a long wait but like I've said, what we are talking here is mini sets. And mini sets are very, very different. We generally tend to get longer waits. And I believe this was actually, in terms of what I'm talking about, these new star mini sets, I believe this was actually the first one that we got, which is pretty cool if you ask me. I wish I'd bought more back in the day. The regrets are there. I could have bought more and I didn't. That's on me, ladies and gentlemen. Now, you couldn't buy, like I say, booster boxes of this. What you would essentially have to do is go and buy yourself a blister pack. And that blister pack would come with a stamped promo card with a different holo, a mirror holo, of either Latias, Latios, Rayquaza, Haxorus, or Drudigan. Now, bearing in mind there were only 20 cards in the main set, that means you could get a quarter of the set just as these weird little stamped promos, which is pretty gosh darn cool if you ask me. Although there were some weirder ways to get hold of these. So there were X and Y single pack blisters where you would literally get one pack of cards and then a promo. But you could actually get the Dragonite or Salamence promo, but they would have the Galaxy Hollow which was very different to the regular hollow in the set. While looking through my binder recently, I found, I think, a playset of Galaxy Hollow Salamence, and I had to actually go and remind myself exactly how I got hold of all of those Salamence. Speaking of the lines, we also got that Salamence line as promos. So Bagon could be got as a regional championship promo. Shelgon could be got as a regional championships promo. Begon in autumn, Shelgon in winter. And then in spring regionals, you could go and get yourself a Salamence promo. So as you went through the season to different regional championships, you could collect that Dragon Vault line as a series of promo cards, which I, for one, think is pretty gosh darned cool. Now, one of the interesting things about this set, and I did mention this in last week's video, was when we looked at Dragons Exalted, they actually had a secret rare version of this Rayquaza. But Dragons Exalted came out before this did. So we ended up in this weird situation where the only legal version of this card was the secret rare print in Dragon's Exalted. Now, Dragon Vault came along, and not only could you get Rayquaza in the set, but you could actually get Rayquaza as one of the blister promos. And yes, when you went to shops, it was much harder to find a Rayquaza than the others, because Rayquaza was by far the most playable of the cards. And it meant that that Rayquaza was freely available, and it still saw a bunch of play. It still saw play in electric decks. It was absolutely out there. But now it was actually pretty easy to get hold of. Dragon Vault was a moderately popular set at the time, but you could just walk into shops and buy it pretty casually. I still have genuine regrets that I didn't just buy a ton of this set, because actually, in hindsight, it's really cool. I'm fairly sure I do have a Korean version of the set that was gifted by a friend, but I'm going to have to go and try and find that. The other cool thing about this particular set is there was no such thing as rarities. Now, there was a secret rare Kyura, more on that in a moment, but 
there wasn't actually any kind of rarity. You would buy these blister packs that had the boosters in. And incidentally, it wasn't like more recent mini sets. It was just the blisters. You could buy the blisters with the five different promos. That was it. They were the only products available. But you would get yourself booster packs which had five cards in. Remember, you usually get ten, but these were five. Every single card in there was hollow. And they were weird liney hollows, not like the regular hollows we usually get. And there were no rarities. So you just got five of the 20. Bearing in mind every booster pack basically had a quarter of the set in, which is a little bit weird. And they would just be truly random. Now, there was a secret rare Kyurem in here. This was a promo in Japan. They popped in this set as a secret rare. It is numbered 21 out of 20, which is why we call it a secret rare. Obviously, like I've said, there are no rarities per se. It's not a good card. This Kyurem was not a good card. I didn't really see any play. It was kind of rubbish. I know some people tried to fit it into decks. It never was particularly good. Yes, basic Pokemon, 60 damage, free colorless energy, hits dragon for weakness. Because back then all dragons were weak to dragons. There was reason to play it, but it, I don't remember it ever being particularly good. Although some people, like I say, did try and play it. And we cannot look at pre-release promos or any of that, or theme decks, because that doesn't apply to this particular mini set. But we absolutely can talk about the most expensive card from the set. And it should not surprise you even a little bit that it is this secret rare Kyurem. And the problem is nowadays trying to get hold of this secret rare Kyurem, well, it's not particularly easy. You can sometimes, sometimes find it for around about $100. And if you can find it for about $100, that is something you should potentially jump on fairly quickly obviously if you go and buy yourself a, a high grade version of it then you're going to be looking at hundreds and hundreds of dollars now in terms of playable cards that made an impact there really weren't very many i've mentioned the rayquaza the fact was single energy 40 damage bearing in mind at the time we had electric decks playing tynamo and tynamo had 40 hp very easily ko'd also, free energy, 90 damage, goes through any effects on the defending Pokemon. Because it used the same energy as Rayquaza EX, which was played in electric decks, people did actually play it for Shred as well. Anytime your opponent would be trying to block you, this would come in and absolutely save you. So it did have two good attacks, and it did see a bunch of play. The other card that saw a lot of hype coming in, but never really saw any success, was First Ticket. And I have a playset of First Ticket in my binder, because I did go and buy a playset of these when it came out. I bought into the hype. It was a very unique, interesting, and weird card. Because before you flip a coin to decide who goes first in a game, now this was back when you would look at your opening hand before you flipped. Nowadays, you have to flip before you draw your opening hand and first ticket becomes very awkward. You don't flip this coin, you just go first. If both players have first ticket in their hand, then you flip a coin as normal. It's not, and it says you may only play one first ticket before you flip that coin. If you've got two and your opponent's got one, you still flip, which incidentally is a ruling I intensely dislike. If I've got two first tickets and they've got one, I should be going first. The problem was, even if you played a play set, you would start with this in your hand around half the time. But bearing in mind, around half the time, you would win the coin flip and go first anyway. So maybe one in four games, I'm being very fast and loose on the maths, I apologize. This would actually end up being relevant. And it had to be four spots in your deck. And then, of course, as soon as the game started, this was essentially a blank card that did nothing. One of the most interesting cards we have ever had in the game. I stand by that but not one that ended up being particularly good. The other card that really interested me at the time, and it's one I did a bunch of testing with, hence why I have a playset of them from the one-pack blisters, is Salamence. Because Salamence had the ability Scornful Storm. Once during your turn, before you attack, you may have your opponent discard cards from his or her hand until he or she has four cards left in his or her hand now the attack wasn't particularly good but the ability did work from the bench and i tried to make hand disruption decks with his salamence 
Like I've said, it ended up being a regionals promo, which was really cool. And it ended up being in those one-pack X and Y blisters, which was very cool. That's how I have a playset of Galaxy Hollow. But the fact of the matter is, I tested a lot with this deck. It never ended up being good enough for being a stage two. Now, because there are so few cards in the set, I've talked about the ones that were relevant. But let's very quickly run through the entire set. Why not? We've got the time. There was a Latias, which wasn't particularly good. 2 energy, 40 damage, heal 20 if Latios is on your bench. No. There were two Dratini, neither of which were particularly good. They had 40 HP, and yeah, one could paralyze, but it was a 2 energy attack, so no. There were two Dragonair. Again, they were too expensive to really be particularly good. The attacks didn't do very much damage. There was a Dragon Knight, which could do 50 damage and discard an energy, if you flip the heads, but also free energy, no. And Hurricane Tail, 4 energy, 60 damage for each heads you can flip from 4 coins is nice, but again, 4 coins, so no. Bagon was a very generic, basic, 1 energy, 10, 2 energy, 20. Shellgon could do 30 damage for 1 energy if you flip the heads, but it was kind of rubbish. Salamence we've obviously already talked about. Latios, 20 damage for 2 energy. If Latias is on your bench, 40. For 1 energy, yes. For 2 energy, no. Rayquaza we've talked about was an absolute beast of a card that was a huge impact on the meta. Far and away the best card in this set and it's not even close. There were two Axew. Now one of them did have 50 HP. But the other one let you search your deck for a fracture, reveal it and put it into your hand, ready to evolve up the following turn. Not amazing, but not terrible for consistency. There were two fracture, and one of them had a really nice ability that said if it was affected by a special condition, you did 50 more damage. So that's kind of cool. Haxorus, no. Two energy, 120 against a colorless Pokemon was cool. And a nice little nod to the fact that Dragon Pokemon used to be colorless before Dragon's Exalted came out. But for a stage 2, this was not good enough. Drodigan, 2 energy, 20 damage. Flip a coin if heads paralysis. Yes, it could use double colorless energy. So it was viable, but it wasn't good. And then we saw reprints of both EXP Share and Super Rod. And this was really, really cool because actually... They were hollow, and that was awesome. What was super interesting is when we hit the 2013 rotation, we rotated to next Destiny's on. And that means that the Super Rod in Noble Victories actually got rotated. So we ended up in this weird situation where this actually kept Super Rod in the format when it would otherwise have rotated, because like I say, Noble Victories went away, and then this ended up, obviously this set came later, it came after Next Destiny, you know, look at the order of these history videos. So it was a really cool thing where even though at the time it wasn't a particularly relevant card, we'd had it not that far before in Noble Victories, it was very much meh, it ended up being super relevant because it kept it in the format, which I very much appreciated. And then, of course, we had First Ticket and the Secret Rare Kyurem, both of which we've already had a little bit of a chat about. Like I said, the free colorless energy 60 damage on Kyurem did make it go into a bunch of decks because it was colorless energy and could hit weakness on a dragon Pokemon. I do not remember this being particularly good. Feel free to correct me in the comments if you believe I'm wrong about that. Not a powerhouse set by any stretch of the imagination, but Rayquaza was awesome. First Ticket is one of the most interesting cards ever. Salamence really intrigued me with the ability, and it was an entirely hollow dragon set with mini packs, all of which we hadn't seen before, and I, for one, thought this was awesome. But I want to know what you think, ladies and gentlemen. So now it's over to you. Do you remember this set? If you do, tell me your memories. If you don't, tell me your thoughts seeing it for the first time now. Go nuts in the comment section, but be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv.
slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do exactly that. But by far, the most important thing is always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.